Hi, welcome to Rethinking My Thinking. I'm Angela Mackey, and I am so glad you stopped by today. I have not vlogged in forever, and I'm so sorry I got out of that habit, but I am wanting to get back in the habit, so hopefully we'll be doing this at least once a week. We'll see. I can't make a promise, but we'll see. I just wanted to share with you some things that God has been laying on my heart. And first thing, the way he's been working through this is through a Bible study by Mary, I believe it's Casian, I hope I'm not butchering her last name, called Knowing God by Name. And it's just an opportunity to take time and know who God is, learn what some of his names are in the Bible, and just uh, think about and dwell on those names and praise him because of those names. And the great thing about God is he is unsearchable. He is amazing. If I had eternity, I would never come to the end of him, the end of his goodness. And so getting to, to um, this side of eternity, start to know him and know him better has just been phenomenal. And then the second thing he's been doing is in our fifth and sixth graders, I'm still working with fifth and sixth graders and even some fourth graders on Sunday morning. And um, in that time, we are now going to start working through Ephesians. And Paul has a prayer for the Ephesians in Ephesians chapter one, and it's verses 17, and I'll probably read through 20. But I just want you to listen to what he prays because this is such a great thing to pray for ourselves, to pray for our families, to pray for our husbands, to pray for our friends, to pray for our church, to pray for our pastors, just to pray that we as believers in Jesus would do this and even non-believers that they would become more like this so that they'll want to come, become believers. This is what Paul writes. It's Ephesians 1, 17. And he says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Oh, that we would know him better and that he would give us that spirit, his spirit that gives us wisdom, his spirit that gives us revelation. Because we can't get to know God without his spirit helping us, can we? We can't do it. So we have to have his spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we can know God better. Oh, that we would know him better. Then secondly, he says in verse 18, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Again, God has to enlighten the eyes of our hearts in order that you may know the hope to which he, God, has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and in his incomparably great power, for us who believe, that power is like the working of his mighty strength. Oh, isn't that so good? He wants us to know God better. He wants our hearts to be enlightened in order that we may know about the hope. And guys, God is not a God of only the brain where he wants us to know, but he wants us to feel. He wants our brain and our hearts to work together so that we love him more so that we serve him more, so that we have a desire to know him. And it's all through his spirit. It's not anything we can conjure up ourselves. Okay, so that was verses through 19, well, part of 19. Okay, that power is like the working of his mighty strength. He continues in verse 20, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms. And then he goes on to talk about how he's seated far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. So the power, the spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is the same spirit he's asking to give us wisdom, to give us revelation, and to enlighten our hearts so that we can know God more. And ladies, when we know God more, we love him more. And the more we love him, the more we desire to obey him. And the more we desire to obey him, the more we desire him, the more his spirit fills us. And the more we can live those abundant lives, those lives transformed into his likeness, those lives blooming in faith by his transforming grace. And so I encourage you ladies, let's pray this over the next week, over ourselves, over our, our children, over our husbands, over everything that we can think of, over our churches, so that we as the body of Christ can live out who God is better and encourage people to come to know him because he, has, he is amazing. 
He is God, ladies. He is amazing, and he has so much in store for you. He has given us such a hope, the hope in Christ that we don't have to go to hell, that we don't have to stand condemned because Jesus died on the cross for our sins. So I just hope that you will spend the time this next week praying this, this prayer over yourself and over your friends and family and loved ones and, and over your church and that we can see God's spirit begin to move in our lives and in the lives of the church and that so many will come to faith in him because of our obedience to pray. Thank you so much for stopping by and I just can't wait to see you again. Bye.